Professor Peter Shergold is the New South Wales Coordinator General for Refugee Resettlement and he joins us on the drum. Peter, welcome. Thank you very much. Now, first of all, can you give us a, a bit of a sense, because it's, well, it's almost a, a year ago, September last year, that this was all announced, 12,000 people. Do we know how many have arrived and are being resettled as of today? Well, we do. Look, there was a time there where I felt like Sir Humphrey Appleby again, <laughs> you know, where I was running the hospital really well, but no one was in it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but now significant numbers are starting to arrive and we will see those refugees arriving over the next 12 months. Last year in New South Wales, where I have responsibility for uh, uh, oversighting settlement, there are about 4,000, just over 4,000 refugees. Uh, about three quarters of them uh, were escaping from the Syrian conflict. Of those, only about 600, just over 600, were, if you like, the additional 12,000. Mm. So this year uh, we will receive the additional 12,000. Australia takes around 13,750 refugees in a normal year. So in New South Wales, at least for planning purposes, I'm reckoning there'll be about 10, 10 and a half thousand And, and were the delays because certain preparations had to be done in advance or was there a bottleneck somewhere along the process? Look, it is clear that the checks being done are very thorough. Checks in terms of uh, security, checks in terms of health. But what's also happening is significant numbers of those are coming have family already here in Australia. And many because of those, they've been preferenced because of that family no, connection? No, people can apply. Mm -hmm. And so uh, some of those, I think a significant number are coming, actually have family here in Australia, Syrians and Iraqis. Cause, cause and some many of those critical... people were actually mm -hmm. living outside the camps there. Right. So, so there, there was some criticism that said, look, you know, Canada has had tens of thousands of people arrive in year one and Australia has, you know, got to ribs yeah. and drabs a few dozen here, a few dozen there and, and, and so on. Why the difference? Look, I can't tell you it is done by the Commonwealth Government. My role, mm. my role is, I think, an important one, to make sure that when the refugees do arrive, and they are arriving now, they have the maximum opportunity to get integrated into Australia and to be able to give back to Australia as mm. soon as they possibly can. Yeah, and as for who these people are, you talk about people who have already got family connections in Australia, which would seem to make sense for a range of reasons. There was that debate, though, late last year about whether this was going to be sort of pro-Christian, anti-Muslim, yeah. or favouring uh, certain sort of minority sects and so on, or women and children over men. How is that playing out? Um, I couldn't tell you the numbers, but I have met now people of all religious faiths, uh, and I've met... Uh, Iraqis and Syrians and Armenians and Kurds. Look, the fact is, if you look at the Syrian community already in Australia, predominantly in Sydney, mm. it is a remarkable diversity of ethnicities and faiths. And that's what we're seeing reflected in who's coming here. They've got one thing, one thing they share in common, of course, and that is a deep hatred of the terrorists who have forced them into this. These are the people who have been at the front line of the shootings and the bombings and the rapes. I can't think of a, a group that are going to be more hostile to mm. that sort of madness. Yeah, uh, Everybody Bill, Bill, bleeds course, the same. Yeah. We all bleed the same and we all fear the same. And, and, and you've been involved, Bill, in, yeah. in, in resettlement programs and dealing with the kinds of issues. Yeah. Of course, you know, we have to bear in mind, if people are fleeing a war zone, they've often endured atrocities and Terrible. so on. And that's when the kind of the healing starts, is once yes. the immediate crisis is over. Yes. What are some of the issues that you expect this 12,000 are going to face? Well, I think the, there's a lot of evidence to show that um, moving them into smaller country towns, and that is a good environment because then everybody can be involved in it. If they become a ghetto in a big city, then the, all that alienation happens and everybody gets alienated and the family gets alienated. But move them into smaller communities and they get accepted into there and they suddenly find that Omar is really good at, at selling something or, mm. and, and people accept them as human beings so that, that that's a, a big issue. And I think the, the issue of, of alienation, that, that many of these kids have been so damaged. You know, I, I, I come across kids who have been hiding because the soldiers came and and they had to hide and they were afraid to come out. And it starts coming out as you start teaching them to read mm. and all these stories come out and your heart just goes out and you think, well, we've got to do something to bring these kids in. And the best way is to have a community into which they can, they can move.
Yeah, uh, David, do you, I mean, you heard Peter's comment about feeling a little bit sort of Sir Humphrey-like, uh, a hospital with no patients. W was there, do you think, uh, an unnecessary delay in all of this or, or did, did they get the, the, the timetable about right? No, I, I think um, what, what Peter is, is essentially saying is that there was an orderly process that was set up before um, people started arriving, which I think is absolutely essential a, as part of a successful integration. So, Peter, from, from here, uh, the, 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 we're expecting to see much greater numbers in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. So what, what are the challenges you're anticipating there and, and, and liaising with the, the community and the church sector and, and all the other various elements that need to be brought in so that they go from being refugees to being Australians with jobs and houses um, and all that kind of stuff? No, you're, you're spot on. It's no use me being a coordinator general and all I'm doing is working with state and Commonwealth government departments. This is the whole community and that's what we're trying to do. Hundreds of people are volunteering to help, which is why we set up mm. an I Can Help line. Mm. We've got businesses that are offering to provide employment opportunities and we've got the most wonderful community organisations that deliver services to refugees. Mm. So the key is to get everybody together. And yes, of course there are problems, but let me be honest here, in terms of the initial settlement services that we as a country provide to refugees, we are second to none. Mm. And that includes Canada and Scandinavia. The key, however, the key is helping them then, their kids get into education mm. and them get into work.